Okay, Legion members, this is JR Cook 320 on Beamer Forms. My name is Josh. I'm going to outline how to do a full CIS pressure test. First thing you need to do is get your test gauge installed. I made my own test gauge using some old lines from uh, uh, well, various cars um, for my test line, or my uh, pressure line off the top of the fuel distributor. I used a steel line from a Volvo 240 Turbo, clipped the old rubber lines off, uh, used high pressure rubber hose with hose clamps uh, available at your local hardware store into a barbed uh, T fitting. I bought a standard fuel pressure gauge from um, AutoZone and then hooked it all up with a shutoff valve. Uh, after the fuel gauge. So I can shut my fuel pressure or my fuel flow to the warm-up regulator off at any time. Like this. Uh, from here the fuel line runs underneath my fuel distributor uh, an airflow meter all the way down to the inlet of my warm-up regulator. Uh, we'll, I'll try to get you a better shot of that in a moment. Uh, and then back from there all the way back up into the fuel return line from the regulator which is one of these two at the moment I can't remember. So here's the other side. You can see all my fuel lines running. Uh, I also have some coolant lines to the turbo uh, running through here but um, I have a fuel line going to my cold start injector uh, fuel line to and from the warm-up regulator and out of necessity for my system um, I clipped the stock lines shoved the rubber hose on over top and hose clamped them um, on the high pressure side on the inlet I have two hose clamps this is my boost signal line here the boost gauge Put that out of the way you can see um, I initially did this as a temporary setup out of necessity and they're not leaking so I've left them. Once you have your test gauge installed you're ready to do your test. First thing you want to do is unplug the warm-up regulator to prevent the bimetallic strip uh, from being heated up while your fuel pump is jumpered. Uh, voltage will be supplied to the warm-up regulator and you will not be able to get a, an accurate uh, measurement of cold control pressure. So first unplug that and you want to jump in your fuel pump. And this is the fuel pump relay. Okay, once you have the fuel uh, pump relay located, you want to jump in the pump. It's most recommended that you uh, use a fused wire. I am not because uh, I don't suspect any issues, but you bypass the two plugs that are closest to the small plug right here. Then you turn your ignition on. If you happen to have a wide band uh, before you turn your ignition on, you want to disconnect your sensor. It's not good for the sensor to run with. Uh, uh, the ignition on um, for a period of time with the motor not running. So disconnect your wideband. My fuel pump is jumpered and running and the first thing to measure is cold control pressure. As you can see mine is set right now at this temperature at about 24 psi. The next thing you want to do to measure system pressure just close the valve after your gauge. Now you can see my system pressure is set at 90 psi. Uh, obviously that's about 15 psi higher than what you would run on a stock 320i. I've used uh, shims on my pressure regulator which is right here to bump system pressure up. Now to measure warm control pressure you need to plug your warm-up regulator back in. 
and my spring is all boogered up. I gotta fix that. Okay, without actually starting the car, my warm control pressure has remained stable at about 51 psi. I'm going to double check this again after taking the car for a spin to make sure that the warm-up regulator is heat soaked. Um, but I can also measure my leak down pressure. So now it's time to uh, turn the fuel pump off and then make sure that the gauge holds above 22 psi for about 20 minutes. <laughs> 